act that requires employers to give the state and its employees a 60 day notice ahead of layoffs, but that only applies to employers that have more than 100 employees. LME had about 60 employees at the Kansas City Terminal. All right, do you have a lot of extra papers and documents lying around that you want to get rid of, but you're worried about identity theft? Today, you can get those papers shredded at the Brookside Shredded event. Jordan Betts is live to explain more on this. Jordan. Yeah, Richard, I just took all those documents on your desk and now I got them in my car and I'm going to shred them for you here in just a minute. But this parking lot here in Brookside is going to be filled with a big truck that's going to shred all those documents for people. They've had, they said, hundreds of them that come each year um, of those pieces of paper that come and will be filled with that will be this imaginary truck that will be here, um, I hear, quite soon. Now, this all starts at 8 a.m. and goes until 11 or until the truck is full. Now, Brookside businesses throw this each year because they say business and documents and especially other people have sensitive information on it that comes to them each and every day on those documents and that their hope is that people put those documents in a safe place. We feel that it's really important to get those documents out of your house, out of your business, and get those documents shredded in a timely and efficient manner, especially because fraud is growing in the United States and people are up $3.4 billion in losses from the time of 2018 to current. $3.4 billion. That's just crazy to think about. And so this area will have, um, this is in between where you can see Commerce Bank is just to the right of me and to the left of me is the tennis court. So right when you come into Brookside at that four stop that's right there, this is where you will find it. And it starts at 8 a.m. So kicking off here in just an hour. And they said they're expecting a pretty big turnout. Back to you. Jordan, thank you. Also in Brookside, the sidewalk sale continues today. Participating stores will have discounts, special merchandise, in-store events, and much more. Some stores are taking part in the sales of Brookside Toy and Science, Brookside Gallery and Framing, and Foo's Fabulous Custard. Oh, that stuff is so good. Plus, there are many more. All right, Tropical Storm Barry is approaching the Gulf Coast pretty rapidly. Coming up, what this could mean for oil prices in the U.S. You're watching 41 Action News. 709 now, the Gulf Coast is preparing for Tropical Storm Barry, and the storm may affect oil prices. Over half of the oil facilities are being shuttered in the Gulf Coast as a precautionary measure. The oil is now hovering around a seven-week high. Companies cut more than a million barrels per day of output as the storm heads for possible landfall on the Louisiana coast today. While Tropical Storm Barry is just hours away from making landfall along the Louisiana coast, forecasters are still predicting the storm will intensify to a Category 1 hurricane. But the primary danger is not the wind, it's the torrential rain and the dangerous storm surge that Barry brings. Wendy Wolfolk has the story. With Barry's arrival imminent, the time to get out is over. At what point do you think you might draw the line and get out of town? Well, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, so I'm going to stay here no matter what. Low-lying parishes are already taking on water. And with 25 inches of rain expected in some areas, it's only going to get worse. This is the first time in the, in the history of the Levee District that we've had to close every single gate, including on the river, due to the river being so high. The swollen Mississippi is already eight feet above normal. Barry's expected 70 mile an hour winds could cause a storm surge that will put the levees protecting New Orleans to the test. Game day is here. Uh, the only thing we can be assured of is something will change in the plan because we're dealing with the unknown. The entire region on edge, hoping it's ready. Wendy Wolfolk, NBC News, New Orleans. Good morning. Just in the last update, Barry has now strengthened to 70 miles per hour, just four miles away four miles per hour away from becoming a Category 1 hurricane as Barry continues to slowly strengthen and slowly move now northwest at five miles per hour. After it makes landfall, it's going to continue northwest and may get into western Missouri by Monday. Yes, that would impact our area. We'll look at that coming up here in just a few minutes. Well, how does your quarterback train in the offseason? Well, if you're Patrick Mahomes, you just go out and toss around the old pigskin. The thing is, SkyTracker caught this video of Mahomes yesterday launching passes over the scoreboard, possibly for a promo or a commercial shoot. You never know, Mahomes could have been aiming for the helicopter. 
or good Saturday morning to you. We are ready to start the second half of the baseball season on the right foot and what's become a welcome home party for one Bubba Starling making his big league debut on Friday night. Royals Tigers game one and Starling coming up to the dish to a standing ovation walking up to the crazy train by Ozzy Osbourne. It's been a long and wild road and you can understand why that's the perfect song. It's the loudest one out walk you will ever hear in your life, but it's the start of something big. Two batters later, Martin Maldonado hits into what looks like it could be a routine double play. Ball gets away from first, and here it comes Bubba on his horse. His first big league run, and the place absolutely erupts. Royals take a two to one lead at that point. Fast forward now, top of the third. Danny Duffy would have to leave the game after taking a line drive off the hand. Don't worry, X rays coming back negative. It is just a bruise. So Jorge Lopez would come in out of the uh, bullpen. He had enough time to warm up because, you know, when you get an injury, you get to warm up as long as you need to. He didn't have to warm up at all. It was the bottom of the third for Chesler Cuthbert goes deep. That's a two-run blast. The Royals go up 5-4. Game tied late in the game. It's Maldonado who steps up once again to be the hero. That's a solo home run. And the Royals victorious in game one, 8-5, the final score over the Tigers. You know, the Royals are looking pretty good. Hopefully they can get this thing turned around and keep this momentum going tonight in game two against the Tigers. That's going to do it for your look at sports. Have a fabulous Saturday. He thinks 716 now Chiefs fans may soon be able to buy used stadium seats from Arrowhead. Jackson County is set to approve a contract that would allow those sales. Under the proposal, seats with Arrowhead logos on their metal end caps would sell for about $400 a pair. Double seats with no logos would sell for about $300. Single seats would go for $200. Customers could request a specific seat number for an additional $20. Bucks. Jackson County residents will get the first crack at the seats. Now, here's Kansas City's most accurate forecast from meteorologist Jeff Penner. Here's an update. Good morning. Outside right now, our KB Complete Skyview Network. A few high clouds. Absolutely gorgeous there. Great morning for a walk or a jog. 69 degrees. There is no wind. There are, is not one leaf. I mean, we've been looking at this all morning. Not one leaf has moved on that tree. Our high clouds are coming from the north, and there's a complex of thunderstorms north of I-80. We're not going to get any of the rain. We're just getting a few of the cirrus clouds blow off from the anvils of those thunderstorms. Overall, looking at a great day. Not such a nice day in Louisiana. Most of the rain so far has been offshore and to the east of New Orleans. And here is Barry now up to a 70 mile per hour wind tropical storm just four miles away from a four mile per hour away from a minimal category one and Barry is going to start to move northwest into Louisiana and may impact our weather. So let's take a look at this this afternoon. No impact from Barry 88 to 92. Beautiful summer day and then down to the south at 3 p.m. There's Barry moving into Louisiana and then tonight and tomorrow morning. It continues to move north through Louisiana and up into Arkansas. We are still to its north, so we have a clear calm night. Again, upper 60s and your 70 for low it's tonight and tomorrow morning. Very, very nice, but then kind of interesting. We're going to warm up into the low 90s tomorrow and Barry will continue to move north and look at this feature on this data at 3 p.m. Tomorrow. There's a thin line of showers and a few thunderstorms from Atlanta, Georgia to St. Louis to Kansas City to Oklahoma City to west of Dallas. It's a huge outflow boundary. When we get thunderstorm complexes, we get the rain cooled air to push out of it, get these little outflow boundaries. Well, this is an outflow boundary from the tropical system, and it's a huge one, and rain cooled air is pushing in from the south, so it creates like a little cold front, kind of a pseudo cold front, kind of bizarre. And if that happens and gets up here tomorrow afternoon, we could have a brief shower or thunderstorm as it moves by and we drop five to 10 degrees. So something we'll be watching during the day tomorrow. And then Barry itself continues to move north through Arkansas. Monday morning, a few clouds around here, the heavy rain down in Arkansas, extreme southern Missouri. And then on Monday, Barry comes into Missouri. Look at the clouds sticking up. There might be a shower or two. Then Monday night, there's heavy rain from Columbia, Missouri, even as close as well, just east of Odessa here on midnight Monday night and then all the way to St. Louis. We'll see how this evolves. It could end up being farther west, which means we'd see some significant rain or farther east, which means we wouldn't see hardly any rain at all and we'd see less clouds. So something to watch there on Monday. 
Rainfall through Wednesday, a few hundredths of an inch, unless Barry comes a little farther west, and no end of rain through Arkansas and Louisiana, 10, 15, 20 inches down there. So if we don't get any rain from Barry, the sprinkler warning will continue because the only rain chance is Sunday and Monday, and that would be from Barry. And the rainfall forecast the next seven days a trace to a half of an inch, and without Barry, almost no rain, and you need one to two inches of rain per week to keep the grass green. Yes, we've had a lot of rain. The Topsoil, though, can dry out very, very quickly this time of year. 90 today, no rain. 80s this evening, dropping to 69 tonight. And then by tomorrow, 92, that slight chance of that afternoon thunderstorm. And then on the seven-day forecast, regardless of whether we get any, uh, any rain from Barry uh, Monday and Tuesday, it's going to get hot towards the end of the week with little rain chances. Man, up and down, up and down. It's all over the map. Yeah, unless we don't see much from Barry, then it'll be in the 90s all the way through. Yep. It's a little bit. Uh, yeah, I like the we, 70s. A few clouds. <laughs> I like It'd be that. nice to get a little like influence the from the tropical system. Yeah. All right, Jeff, thank you. All right, let's check in with Toby Tobin. Hi, I'm Toby Tobin. Our homeowner has a new problem, and it's not a good problem. It is moles, and they can be a huge, huge problem. I've never seen so many moles this year. Coming up, we're going to show you how to take care of them. Hi, this is Toby Tobin. This is the first problem our homeowner has had with moles. And here is the big problem with homeowners that are having a new mole problem. There are a lot of different products out there claiming that all you have to do is put this product down and it's going to get rid of the moles, or you stick this in the ground and it's going to get rid of the moles. Sometimes they work, more often than not they don't work. And the big problem is while you're trying to do this and do that and do this and do that and you're not having any luck, the population is increasing and increasing and increasing. Pretty soon, the only thing that you have to do is to trap them. This is what generally you should start with in the beginning is a good mole trap. Moles reproduce about five at a time, twice per year. They will dig between four to six hours per day and can eat up to 100% of their body weight in earthworms, locusts, vegetable plants, and even tree roots. They're generally considered harmless unless they're doing damage to your lawn. One family of moles can leave so many tunnels and molehills they can completely destroy your lawn in just a couple of weeks. Now, there are tons of products on the market that claim to repel and poison these pests. But since the moles live underground, it's hard to tell if these products are doing any good, and by the time you you find out you may have many more mole families living in your yard. By the way, moles usually feast on the best lawns and golf courses. They prefer loamy soil that is moist so it's easier to dig all day and find food, thus creating even more damage. We've tried just about every product on the market and the truth is the only way to truly eradicate a mole problem is by trapping and discarding them. The trap we found that works best is this easy step mole eliminator. They are very effective. They stand tall in the lawn so you don't have to worry about hitting them with your mower, and they are safe around pets and children since the trap scissors are underground. All you do is place one over an existing mole run, step down and wait. If you see one pop up, you have more than likely caught a mole. Simply dispose and set again. It is as easy as that. There are professional trappers out there that will come to your home and trap moles. The average cost per mole is around $50. For most of us, that's a little bit expensive. It's a lot easier for us to do the trapping ourselves. That's it. I'm Toby Tobin. Have a great week. Ah, uh, the backyard pests. It's time to get out and do the yard work, though, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, mow if your grass has grown. And some areas have not seen much rain. There is a sprinkler warning in effect. All of a sudden, we're struggling for rain chances, but could bury down in the tropics there south of Louisiana, not really in the tropics, but tropical storm berry. Could that help us in the rain department? We'll look at that coming up. You're watching 41 Action News, clear, complete coverage. You're watching 41 Action News. Big Bird is in Kansas City and has a big occasion to celebrate. Coming up, find out how you can celebrate with Big Bird and all the Sesame Street friends crew. It's gonna be a big deal. Good morning. Welcome back. Thanks for joining us. I'm Richard Sharp. Jeff Penders here. We're talking about, of course, the weather. If you headed out to the birthday party, I will say, for Sesame Street, yeah. um, so you're going to need some sunscreen, a hat, right? Yeah, it's going to be hot for Big Bird out there, and uh, I'm kind of excited about that. I mean, I just, it's what it's we an watch. icon, isn't it? I know. That's all we watch. There weren't any choices uh, back in the good old days. All right, outside right now, outside it is pretty nice comfortable at the moment. A few high clouds on our KB Complete Skyview network and it is 69 in Kansas City, 73 downtown, 70 Olathe, 65 in Lawrence, 71 in Lee Summit, 70 in Marshall. We have a few high clouds out there. They are the dissipating or 
parts of anvils from thunderstorms north of I-80. They're set, coming south and falling apart, but we have a few serious clouds in our sky. There's another complex of thunderstorms south of Louisiana, and that's a tropical storm named Barry. And just in the last couple of hours, it has strengthened to a strong tropical storm at 70 mile per hour winds, just four miles per hour away from becoming a minimal category one hurricane and now beginning to show signs of it moving north. Most of the heavy rain has been offshore, but that's going to change here in the next few hours. You can see Barry here strengthening and organizing over the last 12 to 18 hours and beginning a northwestward movement. Might have an impact on our weather here as soon as tomorrow. I'll show you that coming up. 9 a.m. today, 78, 85 at noon, 90 at 5 p.m. Hot, sunny, 84 at 8 p.m. If you're headed out, use a sunscreen, drink plenty of water, great pool weather. We'll look at those impacts of Barry and have an update with the new data coming up in a few minutes. Jeff, thanks. Breaking news I want to get to. Uh, eastbound I-70 is closed at Broadway. Look at the lower left, middle left part of your screen there. You can see that mess on the roadway. That's because a semi overturned there. We don't know exactly what led up this. It was still trying to figure that out. Police are on the scene trying to clean it up. That's just under the overpass there. I-70 shut down in that area. All right, this weekend, President Trump has ICE raids planned across the country. While no specific raids have been announced in the metro, hundreds of people gathered Friday to show support for undocumented immigrants. 41 Action News reporter Tom Dempsey talked with people who work with immigrants about how they prepare families for what they call their worst nightmare. Inside the offices of El Centro and KCK, anytime news of ICE raids come up, concerns follow. Regardless of, you know, it being in 10 cities across the country, we know it happens and it has happened here. The latest round of raids targeting at least 10 major cities around the country starting on Sunday, with agents possibly taking in as many as 2,000 undocumented immigrant families. Times like these often lead to plenty of fear. What you see is a lot of um, not attending, uh, whether it's work, play, uh, grocery store, church. The cautious climate leading staff at El Centro to try and help families by making them more aware of their rights. So what we do is try to get them to understand, you know, not to run, to, um, to utilize their Fifth Amendment, to not open the door. And handing out thousands of these bags. So this is our power. Packet. containing pamphlets of what to do if ICE agents come to a home and door locks they can put inside. If you are to open the door, the idea is that you can open this up and see someone out. With the raids continuing to raise concern around the country, on Friday night, supporters gathered right near Union Station downtown to raise awareness about some of the struggles immigrants face. The cheers, the signs, and the speeches, all for an issue impacting families right here in the metro. Letting people know that we're serious. You know, it's, it's a big issue. No borders, no nations. Stop the deportations. A subject bringing plenty of debate and a weekend bringing more uncertainty and concern ahead. We do try to give them all of the education, but we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow. Tom Dempsey reporting there. President Trump spoke about the impending immigration raid, saying the U.S. has already been deporting immigrants by the thousands, and he's focused on getting them out. It starts on Sunday, and they're going to take people out, and they're going to bring them back to their countries, or they're going to take criminals out, put them in prison, or put them in prison in the countries they came from. We're focused on criminals as much as we can. This weekend's raids come after the U.S. Supreme Court ruled against adding a citizenship question to the U.S. Census. The Trump administration argued it was necessary to get a true snapshot of the population, but opponents here in the Metro told 41 Action News the proposal scares immigrants. We had individuals in fear leading up to this decision as to should I complete the census? Uh, you know, I, I'm really afraid that if I fill this out, you know, the information is going to be handed over to law enforcement. Now, the court questioned the Trump administration's reasoning for adding the question. The president wants to find another way to get a sense of how many undocumented immigrants live in the U.S. Kansas Governor Laura Kelly praised the Supreme Court's ruling, saying the citizenship question would have done more to deter participation than encourage everyone to be counted. 
All right, when we want to we want to correct some wrong information that's been circulating out there. There are reports on social media of an attempted abduction at 151st Street, the target down there in South Overland Park. Some worried people were messaging, Facebooking, and tweeting about it. Overland Park police say they made contact with both parties that were involved and it was all a misunderstanding. City official told 41 Action News it was a few construction workers catcalling to a couple of teen girls. They say they were never an, uh, there was never an attempt to get anyone into a van. Now, the police tell us the spread of wrong information continues to be a problem. They say if there is ever a time people are really in danger, they will post about it on social media accounts and alert the media to get the word out as quickly as possible. The state of Missouri is upping the penalty for drivers who hit road workers. A new law will take away your driver's license if you hit someone on a construction crew. Since 2019, MoDOT workers have been killed on the job in work zones. But those are just, those are people's husbands, wives, um, parents out there, um, and it can be over in a second. Yeah. The new law takes effect August 28th. Starting now until 5 p.m., MoDOT will be doing some pavement work on the shoulders along westbound I-70. Right now, lane, uh, the right lane of westbound uh, I-70 east of Nolan Road to Blue Ridge Cutoff will be closed during that time. You can see it there on the right-hand side of your screen. All right, if you have some important documents to shred, some extra stuff laying around the house, Brookside is the place to be today. Jordan Betts is live with what you can do. Jordan. Hey, good morning, Richard. Yeah, in this spot here in Brookside, there's going to be a big truck that can fill hundreds to thousands of documents. Maybe some that have your social security number, your address, your credit card information. Those are all things that are very important to shred. And sometimes when you just throw in the trash, well, sometimes people can look through that trash. So here in Brookside, it starts at 8 a.m. this morning and goes until 11 or when the truck is going to be full here in Brookside. Now, they've done this before in area businesses say they wanted to do this because it's really important that people keep their information safe um, and hear from one expert of why you should really shred these important documents. It could have part of your address, part of your name, part of a credit card number, part of an auto loan number, and we need to get those things shredded completely because someone could pretend to be you, they could find a way to impersonate you and get that information and really affect your life. Yeah, and just about the past year or so, $3.4 billion has been lost because of people taking identity. Look at this. I just picked this up from somebody. This is a bag full of all that information. She has two full bags of these. Now, the limit is to bring two, let's see, it's file-sized boxes with you. I saw a guy who came in here earlier, and I had to disappoint him by telling him he couldn't bring his full truck that he had. He probably had 40 boxes in there. So just remember, it's two boxes per person. We'll send it back to you. No rain yesterday, no rain today. We're a little bit below average for July and still about 13 inches above average for the year. It seems ridiculous that we need rain, but the topsoil can dry out pretty quick and your yard could turn brown pretty quick this time of year without rain. We'll look at the chance of that possibly happening with the rain. It would be due to Barry. We'll have all the new data coming up. Well, good Saturday morning to you. You know, one of the perks of being defending champs in baseball you get to treat yourself by managing the All-Star team the next year. And T-Bone's entire staff will be running the show in St. Paul next week and will be re represented by four players on the roster. They were taking on the Air Hogs last night and Sizzle handing out pizzas. Why not hand out steaks, huh? Huh? I take one of those. Bottom of the third bone start to sizzle. It's Mason Davis goes oppo, finds the gap, and he turns on the Jets. Winds up with a double at second base, and that's good because you got to be in scoring position for the next batter. That's Daniel Nava coming through with the base knock to bring in Davis. T-Bones take a 1-0 lead. They keep on pouring it on, running all that sauce. 8-2, to two, the final score over the Air Hogs. And fresh off a pivotal home victory over the Chicago Fire last weekend, Sporty KC will look to continue their winning ways Saturday night in a showdown with Vancouver. That starts later on tonight at 9 p.m. Sporting is in 10th place in the West, five points below the playoff line, but showed signs of resurgence in a dominant defeat of Chicago. The Whitecaps, meanwhile, sit two points behind Sporting and without a win in their last five league matches. We'll have plenty of highlights for you coming up throughout the evening. That's going to do it for your look at sports. Have a fabulous Saturday.
D thanks 743 now next month Kansas City Mayor Sly James will leave office after eight years 41 Action News anchor Krista Dubill sat down with him to hear his biggest regrets proudest moments and what's next for the man with the big smile and bow tie. Mayor Sly James is ready for his next chapter. We've known that this day's one have been coming for a long time uh, so we plan for it. Now that the planning is done, we're ready to move on. It's kind of like now we're just kind of in a holding pattern. Mm -hmm. And I don't like to be in holding patterns. As he reflects on his time in office, he knows he's had a lot of success, but it's the failures that sting. The first one being the failure to get the streetcar extended on an east-west axis on Linwood and Independence. I thought that was a huge miss. That's the type of thing that I thought could have had some transformative impacts. The other one was pre-K, which is still stings, still disappointing. He's still frustrated with school superintendents when it comes to pre-K. They weren't doing anything, but they didn't want us to do it either. Their plan was just give us the money and we'll take care of it. Well, sorry. And then I started hearing, well, we've got a plan, we've got a plan. I'm still waiting for those plans. Anybody heard them? Anybody seen them? He doesn't plan to quit fighting for pre-K either. Most will agree the mayor doesn't have a problem coming up with plans and implementing those plans. His eight years were packed with progress. He lists the streetcar. Gotta love the streetcar. It's killing it. It's killing it. Uh, it's creating all sorts of economic activity in the downtown corridor. The Urban Youth Academy. The Buck O'Neill Bridge. The city-owned grocery store at Linwood and Prospect now open in one of the city's food deserts. Now there's a fantastic supermarket over there for people in the community that has changed that area around. Changes on Troost. Couple of billion on infrastructure on the east side. The hotel. I love the hotel. You know, we don't need a hotel. No, we don't need that hotel. Why do we need that hotel? Oh, maybe we do need that hotel. So we get a hotel. And why do we need that? Because if we want to be able to do things like the 2026 World Cup, we're going to need those hotels, may need a couple more. Uh, if we want to have the NFL draft, we need that stuff. And the airport. Seven year problem, pain in the rear really pain in the rear, but absolutely essential to the growth of this city. And as for the incoming mayor-elect Quinton Lucas. We have had our disagreements, uh, and we still will have our disagreements, but you know, those disagreements don't mean anything at this point. Uh, what means something at this point is he's the mayor-elect of my city, and I'm going to do everything I can to support him and this city, period, end of story. Mayor James plans to continue work with his chief of staff, Joni Wickham, and do work with foundations and programs he's passionate about. And he will be an active citizen of Kansas City. I'm not going to be bashful about calling my council person and letting them know how I feel, or coming down to support a group who wants something, or to advocate through others about some things that are important in the city. Uh, I'm not giving up my citizenship just because I'm giving up the office. Krista DeBill reporting there. Mayor James just released a book, A Passion for Purpose. It goes into great detail about his personal life growing up in KCK and Casey Mo and about his experiences in office. The book will be available for sale for the first time this Sunday afternoon at the Urban Youth Academy near 18th and Vine for the mayor's send-off cook-off. All right, 746 now. Big Bird is in Kansas City celebrating Sesame Street's 50th anniversary. Watch this. He showed up at Kaleidoscope yesterday as part of...